Abdur Kelly. Um, most people in the inner city where I'm from know me as either track star or simply rock or just Kelly. Um, born and raised in Washington, D.C. Um, the name track star comes from my family is well known for track and field in the city. Probably one of the most established track and field families that the city has seen or accomplished, I would say. Um, and also through music. That's something I discovered while I was in college and I decided home to come, you know, come home with a new perspective on the violence and everything that's going on within our inner city. So through track and field, I was able to get a scholarship and go participate um, at NC State. Went on and did things like become an ACC champion, was able to travel the country, you know, see a whole bunch of different things. Um, but most importantly, I was able to get a degree in social work and use that, you know, to come home and empower the youth in my environment. Because like I said, a lot of the kids in my environment, they don't get that opportunity to, you know, just leave the city. Most of them are born, raised, and die within a 10 mile radius of where they are from. So it's a blessing to be able to, you know, escape this environment for a second and get a different perspective and come back and offer something different. Um, but one thing that throughout college, while I was living the dream, um, that really bothered me was the gun violence that you know, affected my loved ones back home. And most of the time, I would run into my teammates and stuff, and I would tell them about the di different stuff that was going on, you know, back at home. And a lot of times it was just foreign to them. They weren't used to seeing or hearing about people dying constantly from, you know, murder. <laughs> people shooting each other. People going to jail for shooting each other. I'm losing friends to the cell and the grave consistently. And, you know, when they asked me how did it affect me, I could never honestly tell them because I genuinely didn't know. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's traumatizing. My first time seeing someone get shot, I was five years old. Um, but I also know people who had their parents killed in, them, killed in front of them, younger than that. So I've never been the type to actually sit and say, oh yeah, you know, I saw somebody got shot at five and it's just, it was just normal. And I feel like that's a big issue within our community that I'll speak on a little bit later about how violence in our city, our city is, just normal. I mean, I'm speaking on my experience in Washington, D.C., but I feel like a lot of people in, in, this, in, in black inner cities around the country, they can relate to what I'm talking about. So um, my way of coping with everything that was going on back home was to write. I started out writing letters back home, writing letters to my loved ones that were locked up in jail, and then I eventually started turning that into music. So when I did come home, um, 2019 after you know my track career was done I started grad school did a, a, a half a, a halfway finished but I decided you know I'm going to come back and really give something back to the youth like they need me now I'm tired of just waiting I want to come back and I want to help my community so I came back 2019 and I would say July maybe and between I would say when I got back I trained professionally you know compete professionally in track for about two months before the pandemic and everything really started to take away. You know, the pandemic was something else that added a lot of loss. But for me, I can be honest, it really set me down and let me put everything that was going on into place and into perspective. You know, heal a little bit, grow a little bit, learn a little bit. But one thing that did bother me a lot was the fact that when I did come home between, I would say, July 2019 and then the start of 2020, I lost more people in that short amount of time that I could really think of, you know, in that short amount of time, it, it wasn't monthly. It's like every other week I was leading somebody, losing someone to the grave or to prison. And it bothered me a lot because I'm standing here today to speak about gun violence. This is all about gun violence, gun safety, gun awareness. And I'm wondering where were those conversations at when I was losing loved ones? Those conversations weren't being had. I mean, I could talk about it with the people close to me. I could sit here and, you know, go tell the youth to do this or, you know, give them some different type of perspective. But the overlining issue that's causing gun violence within our community, it's never addressed. Even when we come up here and talk about gun safety and, and gun laws, if I'm being completely honest, I don't see the correlation between gun laws and then lesser violence in our community. Because I live in a community where we have some of the strictest gun laws. Black people in America live in communities where we have the strictest gun laws. So when we talk about gun control and gun safety and everything of that nature, that's really 
and that's it's a scapegoat if you're being completely honest gun control and gun violence and things of that nature there these people aren't going to stores and buying guns and then going back and shooting kids they're literally ordering guns whether you say black market ghost but no matter how they get it but it's a process because they committed to it you have to order the gun you got to put the gun together after you put the gun together you got to load it up after you load it up you got to make sure it works right and it fires right and after that you go shoot somebody pow that's the end of the process that is commitment why are these kids so committed to murder what's the solution honestly what's the solution you have kids who people offer their opinions we speak on different things but we have to realize that these aren't grown adults who are even legally able to obtain a gun so again when we speak about gun control that's an issue for an environment that I'm not familiar with. I was born and raised in Washington, D.C. I went to college in North Carolina. <laughs> you know about the gun laws in North Carolina. I mean, I've seen people walk around with, with anything, because they can, but people there aren't dying. <laughs> They're not, not like, if, if that was the case, we have gun laws in D.C., and I go to North Carolina, there's, there, there, people are able to, you know, stand your ground and all that. I'm having these conversations, it's like, why are these people? It didn't make sense to me. I see people walking around with guns, big guns, going in and out of Walmart. And you don't see people constantly dying over and over. So I'm like, why do I have to wait till, unfortunately, a school shooting happens to get the platform to actually speak on something like this? Why is it that I have to wait until a shooting happens in an environment that it's not supposed to? And I don't mean that lightly when I say it, that it's not supposed to, because white kids aren't supposed to die. <laughs> Kids aren't supposed to get shot up in schools. That's only for us. That's what happened with us. That's our thing. That's only okay in our community. Why is that the case? What's the answer? I don't have all the answers, but I can tell you what the answer and isn't. And that's constantly putting our faith and our belief into a system that has showed you time and time again that they don't want to do anything about it. They don't. I mean, we ran a whole campaign and the slogan was <laughs> defund the police and the moment they got in office we seen <laughs> they gave them more money than <laughs> they never had so that was cute defund the police it sounds cool but that's not the answer let's slide that out the way what's next <laughs> what's the answer to the violence and everything in the black community who's going to help the black community who's going to extend the hand to the black community i don't believe that there's a politician or someone, a part of that establishment who actively is going to go out their way to create any change because if we're being completely honest, one thing, I have this Black Lives Matter shirt on, it says Black Lives Matter, don't get spanked. I'll get more into that um, towards the end. But one thing that I see that Black Lives Matter, this organization that, you know, they came up off of supporting the black struggle. Like that's what it was all about. Police officers harming black young men. So that's, calls to defund the police like these are all slogans and it's all catchy and it's all cool but where's the change where's the real change you know one thing black lives matter and every other corporation in america along with the prison industry politicians whether you say a doctor or a lawyer um whether we talk about nonprofit organizations whether we talk about the music industry record labels hollywood they all have one thing in common they profit off of our uh, our debts. They profit off of our trauma. They profit off of our demise. They profit off of our ignorance. So if we are making this country so much money by killing each other, and then you have people who like us, where they pull out of that environment, and they give them a little money to then glorify the issues in our community, from addiction to murder and every type of trauma. Like, we see our trauma everywhere. Most black people feel they have nothing left to sell but their trauma. So I can't tell them they're wrong when you've been struggling your whole life and then someone comes up, hey, tell your story and make it seem cool and I got you, I'm gonna take care of you. Don't nobody wanna struggle? Don't nobody wanna feel that pain? I'm not even gonna lie to you, I'm shaking right now talking about this because it's like, a lot of people don't understand what you see on a day-to-day -day basis in our community. And I didn't understand how crazy it was until I stepped out of that community and I went to college. And I was surrounded not by white folks, but by other black people who weren't from my environment. This isn't a black and white thing. This is an inner city African-American thing. And after that, it, it's all socioeconomic status. People that aren't in our communities, they aren't going to live like us. 
so they don't even feel like their struggle that the struggle that we you know we deal with they're not thinking about that every day they live a totally different life so when we talk about this again this industry this if I, if I was to sit here and I really want somebody to do this I haven't had the time to actually sit down and talk about it or do it but I want to see how much the world profits off of black trauma black death the demise of black people I'm talking about everybody from Hollywood like I said the movies we got shout out to Tyler Perry he's the goat <laughs> we gonna find some black trauma in his movies you don't never see the happy black families you know the young kids gonna it's always got to be something crazy People getting cheated on, people getting murdered, gang bangers, drug dealers. That's the type of stuff. Pimps, harlots. That's that's what they that's what our representation is in popular culture. And as long as you are perpetuating that stereotype, they'll love you. But the moment you stand up and say that's not us, then you become a problem. So I can't sit here and act like I wasn't nervous coming up here and speaking about this, but at this point I'm fed up. I really don't care anymore. Because again, what is the solution? We all sit here and we praise celebrities who will do one thing and perpetuate stereotypes every single day of their career and then every once in a while do a turkey drive or put Black Lives Matter in a bio or something like that to seem like they're for the cause. You got lawyers who, they love when black people are doing crime or getting caught. They make money. They want that trial to go on as long as they possibly can. They can bill you the whole way through. Doctor, somebody getting shot, you're sick from living in the food desert. The type of food that you're eating. <laughs> Come on. There's people that say this is saying is like if a doctor healed all of his patients, then he wouldn't make any money. And that's we are we are sick people. We are going through something. And no one is going to if they profiting off of our destruction and our demise. Let's be honest. This is America. This is a capitalistic society. <laughs> that's that's bad for business. I genuinely want to see how much money that the world makes from the music industry to the prison industrial complex. These nonprofit organizations who receive government funding and then funnel the money and don't do what they're supposed to do with it. Everybody has their hand in black trauma. Everybody is making a, getting a piece of the pie, except who? The people who are suffering at the bottom. So we could sit here every single day and we could talk about, you know, defund the police and I can't breathe. And that's symbolic because these organizations who are doing this stuff like this, I don't never see them in my community. The only time I see Black Lives Matter in my community, honestly, is in, in the yard of somebody who don't look like me. In the window of a, of a store. In the window of a store. A liquor store at that. You know what I mean? Liquor stores in my community. Now, and I compare that to hospitals and healthcare clinics. You got three carryouts, four liquor stores within a, a mile radius. McDonald's, Wendy's, stuff like this. See, these are the real issues that no one wants to really talk about. We can all just say gun control. It's easy to talk about gun control. But well, we already have gun control in our community. The reality of gun control for people who are mentally ill and background checks and stuff, that don't affect our community. That's for the other world. And I'm not going to say that I don't support it. Like, yes, if you shouldn't have a gun, then you shouldn't have a gun. But I'd be, excuse my language, but I'd be damned as a black man in America if I didn't say I, I didn't fear for my life every single day. I got people in my community who envy my voice and my success that want to hurt me. We ran a slogan called defund the police. They don't protect black people. They prey on black people. I can't rely on them for protection. I gotta rely on myself. So why wouldn't I exercise my Second Amendment right? And then you got kids. I'm a grown man. I just turned 25. This is my life. I've never been Trump, been the one who been a victim of my struggle. But you have kids who are 14, 15, 16 that can't go to the store and say, I need a gun to protect myself. I'm in danger. So what do they do? What I just said. They go get an illegal gun. They might grab a gun. They might share a gun amongst five people. Because that gun protects them, that gun feeds them, that gun is everything they know. They didn't have anybody to read to them when they were a kid, unfortunately. The teacher didn't take that much interest in them because when they were in class depressed about their friend down or their mother being an addict, they just sent them to the principal office. <laughs> He's being disrupted. No, that boy is in pain, he hurting. So again, I ask, what is the solution? <laughs> I can tell you what the solution is it. And that's blindly following these people who clearly profit off of our trauma and our demise and expecting them to be the savior. Because I can tell you this, a savior isn't coming, unfortunately. They've had years and years and years and years to actually do something. We've seen executive orders being given out to so many marginalized communities, so many minority communities. But when it comes to African-Americans, when it comes to Negroes, 
in the inner city, that's not happening. Wait your turn. Be grateful. We gave you guys Obamacare. Come on. We took a knee with you guys. You don't believe that we're unified? I wore dashiki to a protest. We did all of these things for you. Why are you begging for more? What more do you want from me? That's the energy I get. When you ask for something tangible to actually change the, the socioeconomic status of your people. When you ask for something tangible to actually make a better living for the youth. So again, what is the solution? If it's not coming from the establishment, your favorite celebrity ain't going to save you. They profiting off of it. The industry is going to pay them to glorify their trauma, steal their masters, make all of the money, and send them back into that community for the rest of the community to prey on them because they think they have something that they never had. Until he dies. And now you release more of his music and you continuously profit off. This is a billion trillion dollar industry. The amount of money that is made off of our trauma and our demise is ridiculous. I, I really want somebody to actually put those numbers together. I'm not that too fond of accounting and all that other stuff, but I, I know a couple people who are. So my, we can start there. Let's really put it together and see how much money is made off of our trauma. And let's try to understand why isn't even a portion of that money put back into our community. And this goes from everybody, from the people who, it's not a left-right situation. It's not Democrat, Republican, conservative, liberal. It's right and wrong at this point. And even that's subjective, because what I feel is right, it obviously don't apply to them. What they think is right is the dollar. So again, what is the solution? I'm the solution. My nephew right here is the solution. Other people who have been in our community, in our environment, that knows what's really going on, you, gotta be, you can't be afraid to speak out. You can't be afraid to hold yourself and the people around you accountable. This says Black Lives Matter, don't get spanked. A lot of people gonna feel a way about that. But the people in my, my community, they understand. Getting spanked means one thing, but for me it means something totally different. If I'm able to go to my community after going to college and come back with a, a degree in social work and create change within my community, well, we have bankers, we have doctors, we have lawyers, black America, black women in America are some of the most educated. They're on the rise. The resources are out there. But you see a lot of people, they get out of the community. And once again, I can't hold my moral complex over them. They don't want to go back. And then they get around people. That's not even an issue because a lot of people always get homesick. But when I went to college, you know, people to this day, they tell me, you need to leave D.C. You need to leave D.C. Don't stay there. This is going to happen. This is going to happen. It's like, well, if I leave, who's going to help them? Somebody got to take the stand. If I can do it, you can do it. Your financial situation is better than mine. Your major was harder than mine. You learned a lot more than I did. I'm going off of experience and the wisdom that I got from my elders. Because at a young age, I saw what was going on. So I distanced myself and I took a different path. But I still love them folks. These are still my people. This is all I know. This is my family, my best friends. They suffering daily and no one cares about it. So the solution isn't coming from an outside source. The solution is coming from within. We're not talking about revolution. We're talking about evolution. Change within yourself and then look at people who share your struggle and assist them. If you can sell drugs, you can start your business. But don't tell these little kids and have your opinions about people who are in an environment. Who, they're look at the books in the school. They're old. They don't have computers. They're not really taught. They're taught what people want them to be taught. They're not taught what can actually make them an upstanding black American. <laughs> Financially literate. We're not taught that stuff. So if you know this, pool together your resources and come back to the community. <laughs> and help because the help is needed. We got enough people with opinions. Oh, he bought them shoes. He bought Balenciaga. He's 15. He's a kid. He's supposed to be immature. He's supposed to not know any better. How about you start an LLC and, um, and employ that kid? Start a book club and read to that kid. Stop expecting a kid to actually stand up and do it. We got 35-year-old men in our community who just now got home from jail. They don't even know any better. People don't understand. That. And again, to some people it sound like excuses. <laughs> I once upon a time was like, nah, I don't want to hear it. I want, but I'd be a liar if I sit here and told you that it wasn't effed up in our community. I don't have enough time to stand up here before Miss Dr. King daughter come up here and, and speaks to tell you everything that's wrong in our community. 
But I can tell you one thing. The same stuff that her father dealt with, we still dealing with right now. The only thing that's different, we got iPhones to record it, and we got social media to pretend like we're not really struggling. But <laughs> Lord knows. Lord knows that we hurting out here. And it's not a game. See, social media enables people to think that the lifestyle that a lot of people in our community are forced to live because of survival is cool. It's marketable. Like I said, everybody makes money off of it except for who? They literally cause our trauma and then sell it to us. <laughs> and we gladly buy it because we don't know anything else. As a black man, you respect it for two things. Your intelligence or your ignorance. In the world, most black men are respected for their ignorance. That's what they tell you. It's okay to be ignorant. It's okay to think that this is okay. It's okay to think that shoot them up, bang, bang, don't respect women, degrade them, and then complain about when they making music degrading themselves. That's what they're telling us is okay. When you have an opinion and you have, not opinion, when you come with facts and you actually know what you're talking about and what's really going on, they don't want to hear that. That's not what black folks do. Y'all shoot each other. Y'all kill each other. Y'all hate each other. That's what y'all do. That's what we supposed to do. That's what they want us to do. And as long as we're doing that, it's all fine because what? They make money. So the solution ain't coming from outside. The solution is coming from in. You got to love yourself before you can even think about loving somebody else. I mean, look at the gender wars. Let's talk about it all. This all adds fuel to the fire of what's going on in our community. This all adds to a young boy picking up a gun and saying, you know what, I don't even care anymore. Jail might be better. Because a lot of kids, I, I, and I tell you, I, I work in the system. So I know this ain't me just making it up. I see this. I see I'm, I'm, I'm helping their parents who are addicts just getting home from prison 50, 60 years old. And their kid is out here following the same path. They on their way down the same path. And no one, he's a lost cause. Forget about that kid. No, that kid needs help more than ever right now. If you have the resources or even just the thought or the ambition to actually do something about it, other than sit on Instagram and Twitter and post Black Lives Matter and, and, and nothing else. Like, really, we sit here and we, we protest. I'm so sorry. We sit here and we protest daily. We protest daily. All the time. And then people go home and sit down and watch Netflix. <laughs> like, we wake up, we go outside, and from the jump, you're literally standing in front of the White House Capitol of people who probably aren't even in there. And if they are in there, they're not listening to you. They hear you loud and clear. They know what goes on in their country. They run this country. They know what goes on here. If they truly wanted to do something about it, it would have been done about it. So the time you spent... And don't get me wrong, because we need to call some ruckus. Our voices need to be heard. But I genuinely don't believe protesting for 10 hours, begging someone to help you, and then going home and sitting on your behind, waiting for that to come, is not the solution. The change ain't coming from out there. It's coming from inside. I keep saying that because I genuinely believe it. The only people who are going to be able to save us and assist us with these issues like gun violence in our community is us. Can you hand me those signs right there? So, I got a couple of signs, and the first one, it says, you know, the casual, defund the police. If I'm being honest, we're done with this. <laughs> it, 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 it didn't do anything. Defunding the police is not going to work, and even if it did work, they're never going to do it. They said that they wanted to defund the police, they collected our votes, and then they gave them more money. So, I'm going to go with something different. Let's boycott black murder. Right here. Sorry, I'm dropping signs, but it's a lot of them. We're going to go with boycott black murder. Boycott black murder. That's what we're going with. The moment we stand up and say that we ain't dealing with black murder no more, we're not paying for it, we're not selling it, we're not dealing with black trauma, we're not letting people profit off of our... They literally took our trauma and monetized it, and it's one of the most profitable things in the world. So the moment you start sitting here, and hitting their pockets, like again, Dr. King daughter is coming up next. <laughs> he did the boycott that they did. That hit their pockets. You hurt them financially, so they had no choice but to answer. Boycott black murder. 
That's step one. We said defund the police. Nah, how about refund the hood? <laughs> That's what we going with. Refund my city. If you could come up, if you could come up with money, and you could sell these buildings for pennies on a dollar to people who come in and kick our people out of it. We need resources. We need better schools. We need better health care. We need better dental care. And again, I don't believe that's coming from the outside. If it does, great. And they, they want to refund the hood, wonderful. But it's up for me. It's up to me to refund my hood. It's up to the people who look like me to refund the hood. It's up to me to teach my nephew how to refund the hood so when he's my age, he could do the same thing. And last but not least, don't get spanked. <laughs> don't get spanked. Right here. So a lot of people, they ain't going to understand it, but if you know, you know. Stop letting these people drain your energy. Stop letting them make you believe that you're something that you aren't. Stop letting them make you believe that you got to be something that you aren't just to get love and respect in this country. Stop following, stop blindly following people and assisting them with pushing their agenda. In the end, you left with nothing. That's the answer to gun violence. Love your brother, love your sister, uplift your nephew, teach them. That's the answer. Because those resources we've been waiting for, it ain't coming. When Amazon send you a package and it's been a week and it ain't came yet, what you do? You file a complaint. <laughs> they ain't hearing our complaints. It's been a month now. You still waiting on that package or do you go on with your life? I'm sure whatever it is that was in that package you ordered, you could find a way <laughs> to make what was in that box. <laughs> you could find a way, you could find somebody else in your community that has what was in that package. Hey, can I borrow that? I think we could do this better than third. We can make this happen. I'm not saying it's gonna happen overnight. I mean, that's our deal. Overnight, we all just stop promoting black murder, we stop consuming it, and it's like, overnight it's all just changed. Yeah, that's our deal, but it's not gonna happen like that. We got a lot of other issues that I said I don't have enough time to speak on, but it starts with loving yourself, respecting one another, and we really got to come back into our communities and grab a hold of these youngins. A lot of them say that they out of control, and that's for them. The ones who, who will follow and know better, focus on them. When you know better, you do better. All you got to do is give them the message. It's up to them to what they do with it. But just straight up neglecting them and then blaming them for what's going on within our community, it's not the answer. It's not the answer. So I know I kind of not even say got all went all over the place. Um, like I said, this is all about gun control and gun violence. And like I said, when it comes to gun violence and, and gun control, we already have gun control within our communities. I don't know if we need it anymore. We have it. And if we've been honest, when there is gun control of things of that nature, um, it's carried out within our communities. They're not going to go and take guns from people who don't look like me. I've seen videos of people in my community who literally legally obtain guns and the police blitzed them, took it out their pocket. And when they say I got a license, you can see the look on their face like it was defeat. Like I got to get this black person his gun back because he's not the thug I thought he was. He's just trying to protect himself. I'm just trying to protect myself. When I came home, when I would come home from school, I had to be one of those kids who, 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 I couldn't go get a legal gun, not in DC. So I was forced to the extreme to protect myself because I had no choice. We not niggas, I'm sorry, thugs, hoes. We just trying to survive. That's all we trying to do. Angel, what's going on inside is healing yourself and then healing your brothers and sisters. I appreciate y'all. Oh, y'all deep in here. Don't get spanked, man. <laughs> Let me put up my side. Don't get spanked.